What's up fellow coffee nerds? Hope you're doing awesome out there wherever you are and I hope you're enjoying a good cup of coffee. Thanks for coming back and joining me for another video. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you. If you're new, welcome to the channel. My name is Aaron and I'm a huge specialty coffee nerd and I enjoy sharing all the things I've learned along the way about specialty coffee and continuing to learn new things along the way with you guys. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Please like the videos if you like what I'm doing. Please share them with your other coffee nerd friends. I feel like the channel is just kind of starting to pick up some steam and I would really appreciate the support. Enough with the pandering, let's move on to the meat of today's video. So you have an ode and you wanna change the burrs, whether that's replacing the stock burrs because yours are getting worn out and a little old, or you wanna to upgrade to some high performance, newer, amazing burrs to get an even higher level of coffee, then you're in luck because changing the burrs on an ode is super easy. And if you did not see the video we did previous to this, where my brother-in-law Nolan and I compared the stock fellow ode burrs to the SSP MP red speed coated and the Gorilla Gear black diamond coated burrs, then definitely check that out. I'll have a link up here and also down in the description. So for swapping your burrs on the Ode, you're gonna need some very basic hand tools. You're gonna need two different size Phillips screwdrivers, a number one and a number two. You're gonna need a pair of pliers. You can use a much smaller pair of pliers than this. This is just all I happen to have on hand at the time. You're gonna need a brush. And for one of the steps, you may need a small amount of medium to fine grit sandpaper, but we'll get into that once we get into the Ode. So the first step you're going to want to do is make sure you unplug your fellow Ode. Please do not try to work on your Ode with this plugged in. If you accidentally hit this button while your hand is in there, you could hurt yourself and I don't wanna see anybody get hurt. So please unplug your ode before you start working on it. Safety first. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take your adjustment dial here and rotate it all the way coarse. And the reason for that is just making sure that you have a nice amount of gap in between the burrs inside here. That way when you put things back together, nothing's potentially over tight or anything like that that could potentially cause a problem or binding or anything like that the first time you turn the ode on. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take off this dial face plate and it's super easy. It just pops straight off the front of here with a little bit of pressure. Then you're gonna to wanna to remove the hopper lid and the grounds catch bin and just set those aside as well. The next thing we're gonna do is take our ode and flip it on its back. So now we're gonna take our smaller number one Phillips screwdriver and we are gonna remove the smaller screws that are in the dial face plate here to separate the dial assembly itself from the actual adjuster plate underneath. And once you have all those loose, just take this and set it aside and make sure you don't lose any of the screws. There is a little indicator uh, rib here that matches a notch on the back of the dial plate that we just took off. And so you just wanna make sure that you note the orientation of this to make sure that you get this um, adjustment dial plate um, back in there correctly. So the next step is gonna be take your larger number two Phillips screwdriver and we're gonna remove the remaining four screws that are in here holding the um, adjuster plate on. Pull the adjustment assembly straight out and set that aside as well. The next thing we're gonna do is take this auger key out of the auger assembly itself. And what this key is for is actually to lock the auger assembly, which has the rotational burr on it, to the drive shaft that comes out of the motor to make this whole thing spin. So this is a really important piece. Obviously we wanna make sure we don't lose it. So we're gonna pull it out very gently with some pliers and set it aside should come out fairly easily like that. If it does not come out as easily as that, there is another trick you can do. You can maybe try to tap it a couple of times and sometimes that will help. Um, sometimes there's coffee grounds and things like that that get kind of inside there that will make it stick down uh, and not spring up as easily as this one. You can pop the auger down and get the key to come up like that, grab it, and then you should be able to pull the auger assembly out of there pretty easily. So if you happen to notice on your O that your auger doesn't come out very easily or you're having a hard time getting it out, that is normal and what happens or the reason that that happens is because the motor shaft here is applying torque obviously to this key that sits in here to turn the auger assembly. Sometimes there's a little bit of play in there and when you first turn the motor on that key can kind of hit against the straight section of the slot that's cut into the motor shaft and it can cause some little imperfections on the edges of the shaft which then interfere with the clearance of the auger assembly and it makes it difficult to pull it out. So one thing you you can do is use some chopsticks and try and pry it out if you're still not you know able to do it with that um, you can try to use a little pick tool i happen to have where did i put them i happen to have these two little plastic hook things that i found uh, mixed in with my tools i do not remember where i got these from or where they came from but if you have something similar to this or even some metal pick tools um, you can slide the picks down on the side here and kind of turn them in once you get under there and then pull your 
auger assembly out like that, you can grab it and pull the auger and rotational burr assembly out. If you did have difficulty getting your auger out and you do have some imperfections on the motor drive shaft here, you can take a small amount of medium fine sandpaper and just go in here and kind of smooth out along the edges and that'll just kind of help, you know, smooth out some of those imperfections. You might have to apply a little bit of force here to, you know, really get some of them down if you have some bigger ridges on there, but really uh, it doesn't take a ton. And once you've kind of got that all smoothed out, you want to test fit your auger before proceeding to any other steps and just make sure that that fits in there nice and smoothly now and that you don't have any more interference on that motor shaft. And now you can see down into the uh, grind chamber where the stationary burr sits. There's also one more part in here you wanna be cautious of or make note of, and that is the auger spring. This basically sits down around the motor shaft and into the front of the auger, and it is what applies the outward force when you're coarsening up your grind to help assist move the auger out so that the gap in your burrs gets wider and your grind setting gets coarser. So you wanna make sure you set that aside as well if you take it out. Before going any further, normally, I would take some time and I would take my brush and I would go in here and I would clean all this stuff out. I would clean the auger as well, make sure that you've getting, you're getting any coffee grounds or anything off of this. You can also use a little toothpick if you need to to get any packed in coffee grounds out of the Phillips head of the, you know, the screw, um, just to make sure you can get your screwdriver in there nice and deep to make contact and not you know round the screw off or anything like that. You can even use a vacuum cleaner if you want. If you have a, a, like a wand attachment on your vacuum, you can get in here and suck up any of the coffee grounds off the face of the burr out of the screws, anything in here, but just make sure you don't suck this spring up if you happen to leave it on there while you're in there with the vacuum. So now let's remove the stationary burr. So after you have all the screws out, you should just be able to reach in here and apply a little bit of pressure and get your stationary burr out of the ode. If you're struggling or having a hard time getting out, it's stuck in there really tight, there may be some additional coffee grounds in there. You may just have to apply a little bit more force with your fingers to kind of get it to start to break loose and rotate, pop it out. So then we're going to remove the rotational burr off of the auger. And then you can separate the rotational burr from the auger. Should come off pretty easily. Again, my ode is super clean because I've cleaned it recently and been filming all these videos, but basically it should come off of here pretty easily. You might have to kind of wiggle it a little bit to get it to come off, especially if there's still some coffee ground stuck in there. Um, basically should come off just like the other gear pretty easily without a whole lot of pressure. Before you install your new replacement burrs from Fellow or even upgraded high performance burrs, you're gonna wanna make sure that you clean the mounting surface here or the, the face of the auger and the face face inside. You just want to make sure that that's a nice flat clean surface and there's nothing on there that's going to cause your burr to not sit flat against this machine surface. That's very important for burr alignment. There is a whole nother topic of how to align burrs in a grinder like this that we're not going to go into detail in this video, but just be aware that any sort of imperfections or any coffee grounds or anything under here that makes your burr not sit level is going to affect the consistency of your grind and therefore affect the quality and flavor that you get in your cup of coffee. Insulation of burrs is the exact opposite of the removal of the burrs. No matter whether you're replacing your stock owed burrs with new stock owed burrs again, or you're installing some aftermarket high performance burrs like we're gonna be doing. So the burrs that we're gonna be installing back into the ode here are the new Gorilla Gear 64 millimeter black flat burrs. These are a very, very nice burr that just came out, made by John Gordon in New Zealand. And if you didn't watch the video on these, like I mentioned before, links up here, links down in the description, go watch the video where we compare these to the stock burrs, that like ones we just pulled out, and also the SSP MP Red Speed coated burrs. So one thing you're going to want to do is make sure you look at the back of your new burrs, especially if they're an aftermarket high performance burr, and make sure there's a note on here telling you which one is your fixed or stationary burr and which one is your rotational burr. If there are no markings on them, most likely the geometry on each burr is exactly the same, and it doesn't matter which one is stationary and which one is um, the rotational burr. However, if you have any concern or you're not sure, look it up online or contact the manufacturer you're burr and just make sure that they can go on either side before you carry on with your installation. You're going to take either one of the gears in this case and drop it down in here gently, line up the holes, and then we're going to grab our screws and put them back in here. Now these Gorilla Gear burrs did come with new replacement um, screws that have a little bit larger head on them that fill up the um, screw hole in the burr a little bit better than the factory burrs that come in the ode. So if you got new screws with your new burrs, make sure you use those 
before I completely tighten them down, I kind of put them all in by hand and just make sure it feels like the burr is sitting in here nice and flat and it's aligned the best that I can get it with feeling with my fingers. And then we'll go ahead and tighten these down. You just want to kind of get them as tight as you can by hand and not go too crazy. And there you have it. The stationary burr is installed, so we'll move on to the rotational burr that gets installed on the auger. I've noticed with some aftermarket burrs, they may have a lot of slop or play um, when you install them. And so what you wanna do in that scenario is just try to get them by feeling with your fingertips kind of around the edge, um, get them lined up and, and sort of centered the best you can. These Gorilla Gear burrs are machined very nicely and there's not a ton of play with them, but you just wanna make sure that they're as centered as possible uh, before you start tightening up the screws. So we've got our new screws here that came with the burrs. And then again, just kind of feel around the edges. One of the, the nice things about getting nicely made burrs that are machined really well is that they fit well and you don't have to do a whole lot of playing around with them and adjusting them. Um, these are basically centered on there about as perfect as they're gonna get. So we'll go ahead and tighten this up. Now your rotational burr is installed on the auger and we can go back together. But before we put this auger in, Gotta remember our little friend, the spring here, make sure that goes down inside there. Make sure there's no other debris or anything like that in here that could cause damage to anything. And go ahead and put your auger back in. Should go in nice and easily like that. And then you're just gonna wanna line up that keyway slot in the motor and in the auger and reinstall your keyway. Make sure it's lined up the best you can get it and you've got the keyway in there and then just sort of gently release it so to make sure nothing moves and nothing rotates on you and then when you put your adjustment plate back on that's going to push that down in there and as long as the auger and the um, drive shaft are lined up and the keyways in there it'll just push all that down to where it needs to be and you'll be good to go so now we're going to reinstall our adjustment plate here and again just make note of that raised section on here this little um, sort of orientation indicator this um, alignment mark goes sort of down and angled to the right side just like this. I like to just push down with one hand in the center while I get one screw started here. And then I'll screw that one in, basically just down to where it's just barely touching the adjustment plate. So that kind of holds it in there. And then install the remaining screws. Again, just hand tight until the last one's in and then you can tighten them up fully. So now that all four are in there, just get these tightened up. So the next thing we're gonna wanna do, especially with installing upgraded burrs, and you should even do this with installing new um, original replacement, you know, fellow owed burrs, you're gonna wanna plug the grinder in and we're gonna turn it on and we're gonna turn this dial back to fine to where the burrs just sort of chirp and then go one click course off of chirp. With the factory fellow owed burrs, if that's what you were doing in this scenario is just replacing with new factory replacement burrs, it is perfectly fine to adjust um, your burrs to chirp or to just barely touching because those burrs don't get fine enough to cause any sort of a problem with overstressing the motor in the ode. However, with upgraded burrs, they get so fine, fine enough to be able to do espresso grinding, um, that that will overload the motor in the ode. The ode is not a grinder that's designed to grind for espresso. I know there's quite a few people out there that do it. Some say that there are ways you can safely do it and that's fine and dandy, but I'm just telling you what I know from Fellow, which is that obviously this grinder is not designed for espresso. That's why it's called a brew grinder. Um, so when installing upgraded aftermarket burrs, if you wanna go as fine as setting your number one setting on the dial to chirp or just off of chirp, that's fine, but obviously do that at your own risk and know that grinding that fine um, could potentially cause problems with your motor in your ode, you know, stalling or locking up or even burn up the motor if you're grinding for espresso every day with this grinder. Again, some people out there are doing it and there are some workarounds to where you can do it, I just don't necessarily recommend it. I find it better to just have a dedicated grinder for espresso. So just like that. So that's where I like to have mine set. I'll do that again real quick just so you can kind of hear what it sounds like. So that's basically the burrs chirping. I like to go off one click 
and that's where I like to set my number one point. I like to have them there, not because I grind for espresso, but because I like to have a pretty good range on the finer side of things, because I have a tendency to grind finer for all of my brews anyways. I'm usually brewing single cup, um, and you want that to be a little bit more on the fine side for getting a good extraction. So I like to set mine up like that. However, I don't grind espresso with it. So I've got our dial plate here, and I wanted to show you on the back, this little piece right here is what lines up with that raised notch I was talking about earlier. We're gonna go ahead and put this all the way to setting one, which would be the finest, which is where I have mine set up, one click off a chirp. And then we should be able to reinstall this, and it should sit flat in there, not you know sitting crooked or anything like that. If that's the case, you may not have got your adjustment plate in there um, lined up correctly and now you're having a problem with this raised section that's supposed to interlock with this recess section is not in the right spot and it's pushing um, on the dial plate so just make sure that that sits down there nice and flush and then you can grab your screws and reinstall them so once all the screws for your adjustment dial are tight you can go ahead and grab your face plate put it back on here just like we took it off snaps on flip your oat over and you're good to go so that's it your Ode Brew Grinders back together with your new factory replacement Ode Burrs or your upgraded higher performance Burrs for you to be able to get some great cups of coffee. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you're subscribed to the channel, you're liking the videos and you're sharing them with your coffee nerd friends. I really appreciate the support. With that being said, take care, enjoy great coffee and we'll see you on the next video.